Oh my god. Hold on. <laughs> okay. So uh, the workshop outline, basically we're just gonna go over some like workshop guidelines. It's not really strict or anything, it's just like casual guidelines for the workshop. Introductions, so we'll introduce ourselves and then we'll have everyone introduce themselves in the chat. And then we'll talk about mental health and like mental health support. And then we have an activity and then we'll do the conclusion. Let's do this. Okay, so before we begin, I want to emphasize that this is safe space. And the first thing is listen with understanding, speak with empathy, okay? And then number two, let's participate and like utilize this chat. Let's really make this interactive. And we encourage you to ask questions and engage in the discussion. Yeah, please um, interact with us and enter in the chat. Like whatever you have to say, feel free to say it because otherwise it will just be a really awkward video call with me and Tatiana. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna introduce ourselves. So my name is Emily Aquino. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I'm a major in psychology. I am in my final, final year um, at CSULB. And some past experiences. I was VP for Queers and Allies, a recent family head, and I also worked at the counseling and psychological services on campus. Okay, so my name is Tatiana. My pronouns are she and her. My major is political science and economics. I'm a rising sophomore studying at UC Berkeley. And for this year, I'm going to be the spirit and social chair. And Ooh. apart from Circle K, I'm a career center peer advisor and create project manager. Yay. Okay. <laughs> so we want everyone to introduce themselves in the chat. Um, you can put your pronouns in your name if you want, and then put in the year you're in, what school you're from. And then the last thing we want you to kind of just think of any words, movies, songs, and or people that you associate when you think about mental health. And then you can like also read out loud. And if chatting is not available, actually no, use the chat box, Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Nice. And you guys have two minutes. It's okay, Heather. <laughs> I saw that and I was like, oh, that's all she put. <laughs> <laughs> Heather, I think you could, if you do shift and enter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't have Maybe. That. I don't know. I mean, that's what I'm doing, so. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind. You know, when I've asked this question in the past, a lot of people have also said Adele. You have you heard her songs? <laughs> they yes. hit right here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, anyone else still typing? Nice. Oh my god, <laughs> why me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, even when we move on, you could still type if you still mm -hmm. have something to say. But don't worry, I like we're reading every little uh, chat. Yeah, we care. Okay, let's let's move on. Okay. Okay, so what is Health Week and why are we presenting? So today and this whole week was Health Week. And Health Week is implemented to educate and increase awareness about mental illnesses and how to really take care of yourself. It's a reminder 
to be there for yourself, to be there for others. And it provides you resources of how to navigate life. <laughs> and it's going to help you to practice self-care and to take care of those around you. Okay, so why is health, uh, health Week important? Well, sometimes as students, we forget to take care of ourselves. Like, we're going to be grinding and, like, doing homework. So it's important to understand that we need to prioritize ourselves and our family and friends. And sometimes it's super important to address those issues so that you can, like, understand what you're going through. And Health Week is going to provide you with all the resources how to do that. Okay, I almost forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> but now we're gonna kind of define mental health and what it means. Um, one general definition that a lot of people might have heard is like mental health is basically a state or a condition of your mental well being. I like to personally think of it as an intersection of how you feel, think, and behave. Because if you think about it, if you're feeling some type of emotion, whether it's happy, sad, angry, or anything um, like that, you know, it starts to affect like how you think and how you react to it, which is your behavior. So those are some two simple-ish ways how mental health can de be defined. And we also want to split up like mental health, mental illness, and mental wellness and like Put a distinction between all three of those so mental health is merely just a state of being kind of like physical health it's just a state of being mental illness it, what it means is usually there's a disorder or some type of condition that impacts your well-being from functioning on a day-to-day -day basis and mental wellness is simply just a state of living healthily also a lot of people are saying avatar too i think it was two people when they think about mental health. Very interesting. So we're gonna talk about details. In the details, we're just gonna talk about some myths and facts. Um, so the first myth is you are either mentally ill or mentally healthy. Um, some people might think of it as a black or white type of yes or no um, option, but really it's not a binary it's more of a gray area. You can be mentally ill and you could still be healthy at the same time. There are a lot of people living with mental illnesses or mental disorders and they're able to, you know, cope and find the proper support that they need to be able to function and live in a healthy way. So another myth that we have, as long as you have a positive attitude, you can get through anything. So I used to think like this, for the longest time, but um, I've realized that it does a lot more harm than good. You don't have to be positive all the time because if you're trying to be positive all the time when you're going through some type of mental crisis, you know, in a way you're kind of pushing away what you need to, um, or whatever you're feeling, whatever crisis you're going through, like you're kind of basically burying it in a hole and just putting it away. And that's not really healthy for a lot of things. Like it's good and normal and healthy to take on, you know, whatever crisis or whatever intense feelings um, that you might have. And to reiterate, being positive all the time is usually what's called toxic positivity. And then, so for details again, we're gonna ask in the chat box, what are some words or phrases you associate with physical health? Um, so we'll spend like a minute doing this, maybe 30 seconds, 30 seconds. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so 
We asked this because usually, um, not many people did this in the chat for this session, but most of the time when people, when, you know, you ask someone to think of what they associate with mental health, we usually associate it with mental illness or something kind of negative, um, like depression, anxiety, or like going through a crisis. But when people think about physical health, they think of like, you know, exercising, nutrition, or like positive influences. Um, no one really thinks like automatically physical health, cancer, diabetes, or any other type of disorder. So that's something to kind of think about. But I think from the chat so far, no one has really um, done that. But it's been seen in like other places and other situations. I would say pop culture usually. Okay, and then so for discussion, we're gonna ask, how is mental health seen in your own community and culture? And this can be your friends, your family, or whoever, um, whatever group you wanna associate it with. And think about, is it viewed positively, negatively, or in a neutral way? Like, is it shameful, compassionate, empathetic, something like that? So you can be either very brief or very detailed give as little or as much as you want. And we will also spend about a minute doing this. And if you would like, you can actually like unmute yourself and just say it. If, if something you wanna say is like long. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, certainly. Actually, let's read some of these out loud. Yeah, um, I'll read the first one. Lenore said it's a sensitive topic. Yep, <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So Audrey said, coming from a traditional Asian background, mental health isn't something that is really talked about. Older generations tend to think of mental health as prissy and of a younger generation as sensitive. I totally agree. <sighs> yeah, it's... Yeah. And, you know, that's where the stigma kind of starts and stems from. Um, mm -hmm. Alex put, personally, for my family, I think it's more on the negative side. As people already said, it's a sensitive topic, and we just don't talk about it. We kind of explode when we argue about stuff like this. Yes, okay, thank you everyone for sharing it. Well, more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you again uh, for everyone sharing. Um, if there's a common theme between a lot of us. It's usually viewed in a negative light, but hopefully this workshop is the one positive thing of a way to look at mental health. So we're gonna move on to the next slide. Okay, now we're gonna be talking about mental health support. Okay, so the first step when it comes to mental health is to recognize the signs that someone might need health support. And this could be applied to you and to yourself, uh, to others and to yourself, sorry. Because sometimes in a lot of cases, you do not understand your feelings and you just like try to brush it off, but it's important to recognize those signs. Okay. 
Okay, so it is important to be aware of emotional, behavioral, and situational clues, which are listed on the right side of the PowerPoint. So some of the emotional clues include nervousness, sudden mood swings, irritability. Mm -hmm. Behavioral clues include excessive procrastination, withdrawal or isolation from friends and hobbies. And situational clues are like stress from school, loss of a relationship, bullying, harassment, abuse. And in order to recognize those clues, you need to consider some things for yourself. What does it look like when your mental health feels good? What does it feel like when it's bad? And then you should compare that and try to understand what you're going through. And then I want to emphasize that every individual is different and signs of distress can look different for everyone. I also uh, just want to add, you don't have to put this in the chat if you don't feel comfortable, but I'm going to answer the questions listed. Um, what does it look like when your mental health feels good and bad? So for me personally, when I know my mental health feels bad, I start to um, withdraw from a lot of people and it really, you know, my energy levels really change. Like when I, I'm having a bad mental health day, I just have very low energy. The most I feel comfortable doing is like getting up to eat food, but that's about it. But on a good day, like I have more energy. I feel like I could talk to people, like go out, well not go out anymore, but you know, do things that mm -hmm. require higher energy levels. And for me, it's completely different. When I'm feeling bad, I try to do everything, like do all my homework, try to talk to everyone. But then that usually never satisfies the missing gap. And then I just like get sick, I need to recover some other way. So that's how I work. So as I mentioned, everybody is different. Okay, the second step is, so you notice the signs and how can you be supportive to yourself and to the others? So, uh, similar to the signs of distress, the, the signs of distress can look different for all people as well. And then supports are different as well. So one thing that you really need to understand is how can you help someone? And to do that, you're gonna be like, how would you like to be supported? Because everybody is different. And support comes in different ways. You can provide a distraction, you can provide an advice, you can be a listening ear, or you can provide a physical touch because everyone is different. Mm -hmm. We really wanna emphasize the fact that everyone's different. Usually mm -hmm. I know a lot of times, at least in my past experience, I would Google like, how do I support someone who's going through blah, blah, blah. And sometimes they would give really specific um, advice, but from experience, I've learned like, every person really is different. Some people don't want to hear like the advice you have to give. Some people like for my, for me personally, I don't like hearing advice because most of the time I know what I need to do. Mm -hmm. um, I just need someone to listen to me. So we really just have to emphasize that. Okay, so now in the chat, can I have you guys to um, give some examples of how you would like to be supportive and how do you support yourself? And then we'll allocate two minutes for that. Hugs are nice. Yeah. <laughs> hugs, free hugs. Now it's just virtual air hugs. <laughs> air. But you know, an alternative, hugging like stuffed animals or hugging your pets if you can, or your pillow. Mm -hmm. Or yourself. Or yourself, that is a great answer. <laughs> So one way I support myself is I sleep and I watch Korean drama. It really makes me like go to a different place and 
just forget about all my problems. I'm gonna read the chat. So Lenora says, judgment-free listening. Alex <laughs> said, personally, I really like letting people know what's wrong. I have an unhealthy habit of believing that we have a homeostasis and that ups and downs are a part of everything. Mm -hmm. Kyla said, someone just being there to talk with and be with. Ooh, breathing exercises. That is mm -hmm. very important. Tony said, I like to just talk to people to already feel supported, but I tend to buy myself some plushies to support myself and I have it with me when watching my anime. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> so cute and wholesome. <laughs> Video games, face masks, music in the dark. I'm scared of the dark, so I wouldn't do that. But face masks, I like. <laughs> oh, whoa, that's a long one. <laughs> Dude, how do you type that fast? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. I look for a hybrid of advice and just listening. I appreciate any advice because it's a chance for me to look beyond my own perspective. However, it's helpful to an extent. Context changes the narrative and unless someone is in my own shoes, they won't be able to fully understand. That's very, yes, I agree. They can, however, empathize, being able to freely vent to others and having support from close friends makes me feel a lot better. Being able to fully I'm assuming support is supposed to be there. Being able to be, no, 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 no. I'm reading it wrong. I can't read. Being able to be fully myself means being able to be vulnerable and emotional with those around me. That makes me feel safe with opening up. I am so sorry. I don't know how to read. <laughs> yeah, and how you noticed everybody is different. So that's why it's very important to ask people, how do you like to be supported? Mm -hmm. um, I forgot. I didn't answer this. Um, but honestly, how I like to be supportive is going to therapy. It's very uh, life changing. Um, and therapy is difficult in terms of accessibility, but we're all students and we'll talk more about it later. But therapy is provided if you're a student at CSULB or UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Oh, wait, hold on. Someone's calling me. Okay, sorry, it was my mom. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, that, I used to, or I do that too. Um, think of myself as a third party. Uh, would I treat Alex, my friend, like this? Would I say this to him? Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Therapy really should be normalized and it should be accessible for all normalize it and especially we're like in the middle of a pandemic right now so <laughs> yeah okay let's move on okay so we talked about how you can be supportive to yourself to the others but sometimes you as a human you have boundaries and you have your limitations so remember that you are a friend and you are not a mental health professional so sometimes if you feel like you're being pushed too much and your boundaries are being crossed, um, it's always okay to step back. And um, some, some ways you can do that is, I'm really glad we talked about this. I'm wondering if we can reach out to this person as well. Maybe they can offer some support too. Really nice to provide your friends additional support but you have to understand that it's not always your complete responsibility because you have to take care of yourself. And there's always therapy available and counselors that you can direct them to. And you can always check in with them later, like in the last sentence of the slide. So feel free to utilize those whenever you're a little bit exhausted. And do not feel bad about it because you're human as well. And then sometimes people can forget that you're not a health professional, so please take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. I would also like to add, uh, just from personal experience, I used to be one of those people that would stay up really late just to talk to another person to help them 
whatever mm -hmm. they're going through. And honestly, it was really difficult just because I would stay up late and then, you know, I'd start my day with work and school, not having, you know, as much energy as I should have. And it's just a long, tiring day. Um, some advice that some people have told me um, is just you're doing yourself and the other person like a favor when you're able to express your boundaries and when you're able to just say, hey, like, I don't think, you know, um, or saying like, I, I need to take a step back or like, hey, can I check in with you another time? Because it would be a lot better to be able to provide support to someone when you're at 100% rather than when you're just both not feeling 100%. It's just unfair to the both of you. Like you don't get to take care of yourself and the other person doesn't get the proper support that they might need. So keep that in mind. Boundaries are hard, but they're healthy and really necessary for most of the time. Yeah, and I would like to add one more thing. Um, when people are sharing their problems with you, it can also take a mental toll on yourself because some things you cannot change them and you're gonna be thinking about it, how you can help them if you're being enough. So always understand that you have to step back and take care of yourself first. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're going to go over the resources like we talked about. So UC Berkeley and CSULB both have CAPS and Let's Talk, um, which is pretty amazing. So CAPS just stands for Counseling and Psychological Services. So these are the numbers that you can contact to make an appointment. But of course, you can also go on their respective websites to find more detailed information. And then another thing that CSULB and UC Berkeley have is let's talk. So basically what it is, it's drop-in consultations. What makes it different from like an appointment with a counselor, like long-term, short-term appointments, um, this is just drop-in. They have available hours and you just drop in and you can ask for advice or if you need to vent or something like that. They're informal. They don't require an appointment at all. And I believe they, sh they should still be doing them, but if not, since the semester is starting again, they will be back to a regu regular schedule. But of course, check the respective websites um, for more details. And then in cases of a crisis, so there's a crisis text line. If you're not feeling comfortable with hotlines or talking on the phone, I am not at all. I don't feel comfortable talking on the phone. So texting is something I'm more comfortable with. You can text 741-741, you can enter anything, and then you'll be on the text line with a real live person texting you back. And then you can also contact CAPS again in case of a crisis as well. It's the same number. And then other resources. So CSULB has SHS, which is the Student Health Services. So that goes from like physical health and a little bit of mental health, but um, they focus on maintaining physical wellness. Okay, and then um, UC Berkeley offers Be Well. Be Well at Cal is a university health service efforts to encourage students to take care of themselves in all aspects of their life. So they want you to have balanced and fulfilled lives. So feel free to reach out to any of those provided resources. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, now we're gonna do an activity. Okay, <laughs> so um, for this activity, what we're gonna do, we're gonna make you, we're gonna force you to write love letters to your future self. So the preferred platform is futureme.org if you wanna go and open a new tab. Um, basically, you can write a future email to yourself in the future, um, but if you don't wanna do that, feel free to just write on paper or do it on like whatever writing platform you prefer. But basically we're just gonna spend <clears throat> the rest of the workshop writing a mini love letter to your future self. So <clears throat> some prompts that we have included, you can either write encouraging words that might've helped you this year, a memory that brings, you a, brings a smile to your face, at least five things that you genuinely admire about yourself, or that others have said they admired about you. 
um, please brag about yourself. You're amazing and you deserve it. And the last prompt is, what are some ways you can love yourself more? So for these prompts, it's really just free range, write what you want. These are just some examples, inspiration, but yeah, we're gonna spend the rest of the time doing that. <clears throat> so let me see. Can you still see my screen? So this is what the website uh, looks like. It's completely free. I think the only sign up thing you do is just enter your email. But while we do this, I'm gonna play music. Emily, you could share your computer sound. Yes, I don't think I turned that on when I shared my screen. Let me do that again. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Yeah. Okay,
Okay. I think it's been five minutes now. Um, let's go back. So basically, this is the last slide. But we hope like you enjoyed doing the activity. If you didn't finish or if you're still working on it, like honestly, you can do this anytime, any day, whenever you want to. It's always nice to leave yourself um, huge love letters. So conclusions and some things to think about. So some things that you don't have to answer in the chat, but just to think about after the workshop, um, my mental health contrasts from my physical health. How can we as individuals reduce the stigma of mental health? What are new things that I can do to maintain my well And then what does it look like when my mental health feels low? How do I like to be supported? And yeah, that's basically it. If you have any like further questions, feel free to message us or ask in the chat. And mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'll drop my email and Instagram in the chat if y'all want to follow. <laughs> you know, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do the same. <laughs> but, um, yeah, another thing. So for CSULB students, like if you oh, ever bye. need um, assistance, like navigating CAPS, uh, feel free to hit me up. I would be more than happy to help you. Um, I have a little bit of experience knowing how they work. So yeah. What's my Instagram name? Oh my god. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was Emily the Artist or something. Uh, oh, that's one of them. Actually, yeah, follow my art account. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I remember that. I just remember that for some reason. So crazy. <laughs> Thank you. Same. That's the one I remember. Emily the Artist. <laughs> Yay, it sticks. <laughs> it does. No, it really does. Okay, but yeah, this is the uh, futureme.org. For future letters. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Yeah. So, yeah.